Hello everyone and welcome back to the Napoleonic Wars. I'm here again with Vince for the second part of our third developer commentary. Hey, what's up Vince? Welcome back again. Hello. Alright, we have a couple of new questions. Uh, you can begin by just answering us. Where are we now? What's going on? <laughs> We're in Paris. Um, are we? Are we? Uh, well, basically this is uh, a little replica of Paris. I want to say right from the start, this is not completely historically accurate. Alright. Um, but we thought it was cool anyway. Because nice the yeah, the Arc de Triomphe, if we look at it from here, it was actually constructed in eighteen thirty two, I think, so it's not historically accurate that we put it in. But I thought it was so beautiful, we I mean we just had to, you know. Looks sweet. And it's also an urban map. There weren't any real urban maps before and yet there were many battles that were fought out in urban cities, I guess. Or uh, Yes. Looks nice. We, we, we could capture this beautiful. Oh, so yeah. Basically, the Prussians captured to the Arc de Triomphe. Now that's really wrong. Alright, it's a conquest game mode, right? Yes. Sweet. Well, what's your question? Uh, yeah, I have one here. Uh, my question is will there be a distinctive difference between the musket and rifle if incorporated? Yes, of course. Uh, the rifle is a little uh, bit uh, smaller weapon. Mm -hmm. But you reload it slower because it's a rifle barrel. So uh, with a rifle barrel, it's harder to put a musket ball in in real life. So it reloads slower. All right. Um, but your advantages are you you shoot a lot more accurate. So if you have a rifleman, for instance, the British 95th rifles, they have mm -hmm. a Baker rifle and they are pretty accurate. All of right, course, sweet. They have to reload long. But you remove the bayonet from the Baker rifle as well, right? Exactly, for balancing reasons. They yeah, have a true. little uh, sword though to protect themselves. Yeah, cool. Uh, will all the flags from Mountain Musket Battalion be in Napoleonic Wars, or will you replace them all with the new fancier looking ones? Which flags do you mean then? The the user flags from the previous, um, where all the regiments picked their own banner. The oh, you mean like on, on top of your head? Yeah, displayed on your head, exactly. Alright, well those are um, a complete new custom uh, set we made. Mm -hmm. um, different real flags uh, from different nations, but also different funny flags like the one you have on my head, this little squirrel. Yes, from, I'll uh, enable that. Squirrel. You know, we can go yes. into the next question as you said that. Uh, where does the name and the whole idea behind Flying Squirrel Entertainment come from? Well, <laughs> it, it's actually pretty uh, funny. Um, basically, our team spent, I think, a whole weekend in TeamSpeak mm -hmm. thinking of a name, and it never worked out. At some point, we were so desperate and completely drunk that we thought, okay, let's do this. We'll go to Wikipedia, we'll click random article, and whatever comes up, I don't care, that's going to be our name. So and, I, everyone, oh. everyone was watching, and I just clicked random article, and what came up was the bazillion flying squirrels. So th that's that's how it was decided. How did that feel to you, though? Let's go to Salway in here. What, did that, what was your feeling well, when that popped up? Did it feel right instantly? Yeah, I, I just knew that that was it. I just searched it on Google. And then mm -hmm. I saw this uh, beautiful uh, flying squirrel as a, as a picture on Google Images. And then I just asked uh, my, my girl, a German uh, a friend I have, mm -hmm. to make a little logo for us, and she did. And Sweet. so our company was born. That is, that's a co cool little story behind it. Here's a question that I've been getting as well from a lot of people. Um, will it be possible to have two factions on one side, um, as uh, seen in well, other different modifications and games, if it's, if it's possible for the future? Um, last question I'll do on this map. Basically, um, we thought about it, mm -hmm. but um, because there's a, a couple of things going wrong. For instance, um, if there's two factions that look alike, then it's going to be really hard to see the enemy. And on top of that, um, if you have multiple factions visible on your map, your computer is going to be loaded with a lot more different models and textures. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a bit uh, a lot of reasons not to do it. Right, so we, we choose to keep it uh, as, as it is, basically one faction against the other. All right, cool. All right, well let's change the map because I think everyone saw Paris by now. It's a nice map though. I think there's some other urban maps as well, right? Some snow variants and what and whatnot. It's gonna try my. Hey, let's shoot that guy over there. Spears, shoot him. You did a nice pistol on. snipe before. Oh, this is taking too long. Let's let's go melee on him. Oh. oh. We'll get, him in, we'll get him in the end of the next map, though. Alright, I have a couple of other questions here. Uh, this is probably going to concern a lot of people. Because, uh, you know, sometimes mounted musket could go quite heavy on you. Um, so, people have been asking here... I'm going to go with this nice new regiment. Uh, people have been asking if uh, there will be less lag and compatibility for the new line battles if it's more optimized in many ways. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, 
almost every little bit of shader code has been rewritten to mm -hmm. make it more performing. Every little bit of code has been rewritten. On top of that, all our new models, although they look a lot better, User are actually uh, 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 so it's are actually a lot uh, better on performance. Mm -hmm. So so it's like improvements all around. Right, sweet. Um, did you also make the Lancers less OP before they were overpowered and annoying? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Now, there's been a lot of arguments within the community about the Lancers. I just want to say right off the bat that we did change them. What we did, we removed the ability to block with your Lance. Mm -hmm. Now, before all the Lancer regiments uh, start to rage at me for hours, I just want to say we tested it a lot with both uh, people that play Lancers all the time as infantry guys and everyone enjoyed the change. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's going to stay. Alright, cool. Uh, will the new maps be even be more even or more one-sided? If they will be favoring a nation, or if it will be... I mean, you know, sure, the wars were not very fair, but if the some maps will give um, one of the factions a clear advantage, or uh, if they will be more even-sided. Well, that depends on maps. Some are more defendable for one side as the other. That's why we added um, um, we added an ability to switch the the like half time within the rounds to switch the teams. So first you were a defender, then you're an attacker. So both uh, sides get a, basically a chance to capture a certain object. All right, sounds awesome. Um, w would we get assistant points if I help kill an enemy? Uh, no. All right, now that that would probably. You know, swap I mean, the we're focus. not Team Fortress 2. This is not that. This is a bit more realistic. I understand. Let's go ahead and see if we can shoot Napoleon here. Oh, he does small, so it's pretty hard to hit him. Here. Yeah, it's cool that you made uh, an actual Napoleon character to it. I mean, the, the previous one looked nice, but this one just resembles him fully, to be honest. It's very nice. Yeah, we, we spent a lot of time see how specific units looked, and that includes Napoleon and all the other generals, so we made him really historically accurate how he looked back then. Alright, cool. What map is this, by the way? It reminds me a bit. Um, oh yeah, of course. This is, uh, this is La Haison, uh, which is uh, one of the farms that, w that was in the Waterloo battle. This was actually defended by the uh, British uh, during the uh, during the Battle of Waterloo. Alright, this is most this is the, definitely one of the most iconic Man and Musket uh, maps since previous, uh, right? Right, but you're not gonna um, basically recognize it back, you know? No, I know, um, but it, it it's like an updated version, a more realistic approach to it, right? Because I recognized that there was a barn on the side, and but it's it's really nice, yes. and I think it's gonna be the one you're seeing looping on quite a lot of servers. Anyways, I think that's about it. That was the second part of our uh, of our dev commentary. And once again, uh, I said in the previous video that I was going to give a copy of the game to one winner, the, the guy that answered the most creative question. And I think me and Vince, we took it too far maybe and uh, went on the, the jolly side. But Vince, who do you think should win the game? I mean, who has been an iconic mountain musket personality during the previous months? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, so I think it's it's only fair for the Stanky Boy banned so long mm -hmm. that uh, for, for his, his sad question, we'll, we'll give him the DLC. Yeah, alright, congrats Steffi Boy. Uh, the On behalf of the Mountain Musket community, me and Vince, uh, congratulations, you, you are, you're a champ, mate. Anyways, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. See ya.